Gillian Tett, thank you so much for joining us here at the PLSA's investment conference. Great to be here. Welcome. The topic that's uh, on everyone's lips at this conference this year is diversity and what that means across the board in terms of people, of diversification of investment. What, what's your view on what that means and, and what it brings? Well, I think if you want to understand why diversity matters, you need to under accept that there's a second D that everyone needs to care about, which is disruption. Because we've spoken a lot in recent years about technology and disruption, about economic disruption. What we're seeing today is actually political disruption as well. Many of the old models that people assumed were set in stone are breaking down. And what that means for investors is not only do they need to actually recognize that issues like political change, cultural patterns, social patterns really matter, and let's remember that many investors haven't thought about that in the past, they also need to realize that they need to try and challenge some of the preconceptions they have in trying to predict where the world's going. And that's why diversity matters, because when you have teams that are all made up of the same kind of people, it's that much harder to think outside the box. So particularly in this environment, a breadth of thinking helps? Absolutely. I mean, if you look back over the last couple of years, there's been one series of political shocks, political surprises, and frankly, economic and financial shocks too. And if you come from just one way of thinking, one ideological viewpoint, one industry, you tend to end up being very narrow and unable to see the looming shocks that are coming down the tracks. So very important to have diverse thinking and, and diverse people from all backgrounds and all ages and all ways of thinking in, in your business to make it succeed. I'm passionately in favour of diversity and too often diversity has got defined simply as being about gender diversity and gender diversity is important but actually ethnic diversity and age diversity and I would argue some element of professional diversity is important as well because one of the problems that's really hung over the whole investment industry in recent years is that in the late part of the 20th century everyone came from a very narrowly defined economics background if you like an MBA background a CFA background which tends to look at the world in a certain point of view through models, through rules, and discount many of the political factors and cultural factors that are turning out to be so incredibly important today. So what would you encourage the, there's 900 pension professionals here, what would you encourage them to think about and what's your speech today going to say to them, what do you hope they'll take away if you like? Well, what I'm going to be trying to do today is provide a framework for making sense of the extraordinary populism and political upheaval that's gone through America and the UK and is now probably going to hit continental Europe this year as well. And I'm trying to get encourage them to think about issues like fragmentation of um, media, like the lack of trust in institutions, like the degree to which people are looking for customised politics and the unpredictability that creates. I call this the FUCU framework that helps to capture what's going on amongst the electorates right Right now. But rising above that particular issue of what's happening with populism, my key message is this. If you want to understand where the global economy is going today, it is not enough to just use the framework of traditional economics. You have to start thinking about politics and culture and social patterns too. If you do not have people inside your team who are able to think that way, you need to find them. So that's finding the right people. What do the general public demand in this environment because we're all becoming um, much more savvy consumers we demand transparency and immediacy so does that change how businesses have to work too it's an incredibly interesting time right now because in the past people thought that the financial industry was in its own silo and frankly when the financial markets were booming no one really questioned it very much people thought that economics and finance and money was a self-contained thing that could be understood with algorithms and a computer model and that was it What's changing today is it's becoming clear that social and cultural factors are affecting finance and economics, but it's also becoming clear that the new generation of consumers, millennials if you like, don't regard business and finance as something in a silo. They want to integrate their sense of social responsibility together with finance and economics. And so people are having to take a much more joined up view, not just in terms of predicting the future trend of economics, but also in terms of trying to model, define and if you like, sell financial products too. So you talk there about social responsibility, do you think consumers are much more savvy in those terms and are demanding that companies do take much more responsibility for how they operate? 
not all consumers are engaged in terms of social responsibility at all. It's still a minority of consumers and it tends to skew towards the younger ones. But what's clear is the assumption amongst many financial companies and frankly amongst many CFOs and large non-financial companies that they can relegate the issue of social responsibility to a separate silo called CSR or corporate social responsibility detached from the core business. That assumption is starting to fragment. And increasingly, you're seeing companies like Unilever saying, actually, we need to take a much more integrated approach to trying to combine this. And when you do see that happening, is that just sort of natural progress or is that groundbreaking? Well, I think the key issue right now is that companies are being forced to think about the issue of trust. And something I'm going to talk about today is an Edelman Trust Barometer, which shows that trust has significantly declined, not just in banks, but in big companies too. And in many ways, the key to trying to address that is to become more transparent with consumers and to be essentially doing things that don't just look good, but also actually are good and are transparently good. Because these days, the idea that anybody will simply trust a CEO if they say something has gone. Increasingly, consumers and also employees are asking for more information and spreading it through horizontal ways, through Facebook, through Twitter, through social media. They're talking and trusting people in their peer group rather than authority figures now. And so a company is to not merely try and reorient itself to think about these social issues, but also think about how it communicates that message as well. On a very basic level, pensions are about long-term saving. How good are consumers about uh, thinking about that when there's a lot of turmoil in the immediate sort of future? I think there are a lot of parallels between the financial industry and the healthcare industry in the sense that consumers kind of know they ought to be thinking about their health, they ought to be thinking about their pensions, they tend not to address it until there's actually a crisis. And on top of that, the reality is that the technical expertise about pensions, like the healthcare, is in, a small ha in the hands of a small group of technocratic experts, and, and if you like. So I think people are thinking about pensions. I think they need simplified information and in some ways simplified choices and they also need to find a way to actually make people realise that it's something people need to address today. They can't keep putting off. In just the same way that people are starting to think about the food they put in their bodies, people need to start thinking about their personal finances and their saving habits from an earlier stage. Quite tricky when the political environment is so, so tumultuous as it is at the moment. Well, I think one of the problems about what's happened in recent years is a super low interest rate climate has left many people cynical about the value of saving because they don't get much return. And at the same time, the political uncertainty and the questions about future taxation policy has also left people saying, well, hang on a sec, I can make all these plans and they may go up and smoke. But the reality is that there needs to be a much better discussion about how to save for the future. There needs to be more financial literacy. And frankly, it would be good for the government to take a lead in this respect going forward. Julian, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you for sharing your thoughts.